Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Warsaw for the Wargaming.net League Grand Finals. <laughs> My name is Mitch Uber Leslie. I asked him how many hours. And what a day it was yesterday. Group A and Group B, the atmosphere was incredible. The emotion was high. We saw some fantastic games. Yeah, it's been great. The Polish crowd carried, really carried the Lemming train. Uh, they defeated Synergy. They defeated uh, Simp Americans. I mean, they had a rough ride. And uh, Red Rush Unity also did very, very well. Yeah, they came through in a stunning display of World of Tanks. Let's have a little bit of a closer look at how yesterday went down. So it's day one of Wargaming.net, the Grand Final. We're coming to you from Warsaw, Poland. Not any location, but a cinemaplex where we have seating for literally 600 plus fans and a lobby full of entertainment and action. The teams are ready, not just any teams. The best teams in the world have descended on Poland to duke it out, to claim that monolith prize. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at what's cooking. So today was first day of the Grand Finals for us, where we, we have beaten our eternal enemies, Team Synergy. Um, we have qualified for the second day, and we are happy about it, I'm happy about it. Ну, в общем, мы ожидали немного от себя больше, но когда играли с корейцами, команда, но немного удивились. Ну, вообще, то, ну, впрочем, мы не знали, как они играют, и они нас удивили. Но потом мы собрались и все дело довели до конца. I was very exciting and very... I, I was... I, I have a good memory to this, yeah. We are to tomorrow facing the guys from Korea, South Korea, the Areta team. They are really waiting for us and we are waiting for them because it will be nice to play against the Asian team, not the guys from, uh, from USA or from Europe because we are used to, to fight, fight with this guy, kind of guy, setups, kind of guy, teams. Tactics are always there, but it depends on who you are playing and what the situation is in the game. Ты можешь победить или не можешь победить. Если ты фаворит, то ты играешь аккуратно. Если команда на голову выше тебя, то ты можешь и что-то сыграть, ну, секретную тактику ту же самое. We have a good memory to win the one game uh, against the uh, Red Rush Unity or uh, we won the against uh, we won against the uh, MS Space Maker where you're dead. So we're gonna face Team Arid tomorrow from Korea. I think it's gonna be a tough match but I'm looking forward and I think we can win. Great to hear some of the insights of the players yesterday. And as you can see from that video, it was a huge event. This place was pretty much filled to capacity. Let's actually duck back to the lovely Sean Charles, though, who's been hanging out in the lobby earlier today. Hello, everybody. As the observant of you will have noticed, it is, of course, day two here at the Grand Finals, using that hashtag, the Grand Finals. And as you can see behind me, it's beginning to get a lot Fuller. Why? That's because things are beginning to heat up. There's going to be a lot of hot games going on today with the best action, the action you'd expect from the world of tanks. Um, I'm lucky enough to be joined by this young gentleman. Hello, good sir. How are you? 
I'm going to jump on this side of him right now. How far have you come today? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Did you travel a long way to join us here no, in Warsaw? Uh, uh, 30 kilometers. Only 30 kilometers. How much do you like World of Tanks? A, a lot. <laughs> How much time a week do you spend playing? For, uh, three hours per day, I guess. Three hours per day. That's pretty hardcore. And do you have any predictions for today? No. We'll be, this is, what will happen there will be some random, I, I think. But uh, I believe the teams have uh, big tactics for any play from any side. So, no predictions, very random game, lots of tactics. Do you have a favorite team? Lemon Train. Lemon Train, definitely the favorites for now. Back to you guys. Well, it's called us to the atmosphere out there as well. Tons and tons of people lining up to get in. But let's have a look and see what's going to be happening today. Let's check in with our schedule today is the playoffs day, that's right. Our six teams that qualified first from their respective Wargaming.net leagues will be playing out as well as our two teams to advance from Group A and Group B yesterday. And don't forget Sunday are the deciding games and the three most important matches probably in uh, World of Tanks history, the finals tomorrow for this trophy. That's right, now Carmack, let's have a look at the brackets today as well. Of course, it's a double elimination bracket. Anybody familiar with esports knows how it works. Winner goes through, you lose twice, you're out, that's it. All right, so going straight down the list, we've got Virtus Pro taking on the Red Rush Unity. That will be happening off stream outside in the foyer, but we will bring you the results as they come in. The real story, though, is what's happening on stage. We're going to have Fnatic from USA going up against the JL Esports Club from China. And then the lower half of the bracket, we've got the dead favorites here, Navi versus PvP Super Friends, the Asian team with Batman. Watch out for Batman on that team. And then we have the number one team from Korea, Arete versus, and I want to hear some noise, versus Lemming Train. Definitely, definitely still the fan favorites, especially after yesterday. Well, we've glossed over things a little bit for you guys right now, but let us go a little bit more into the nuts of bolts of what our first matchup is going to look like. I'm going to pass it over to our team of experts at the analysis desk. Clutch, take it away. Thank you, Uber and Carmack. I am Joshua Clutch. Great. Joined on the set by Wilkie from Free Fall and Mr. Mojo from the Kasna crew. Gentlemen, day two is almost upon us here, ready for the first match. But of course, we got to introduce Melly, who's heading up our social media side. Melly, how can fans interact with us all weekend long? It is really easy, and people are already starting to post stuff about those great, uh, this great event. And it's it just, just simple. Head over to our Twitter and Facebook platforms and Join our network, become a part of our big and huge family, and just use the hashtag the Grand Finals to get it involved with, with us. Hashtag the Grand Finals, and a lot of people are going to be hashtagging Team America as Fnatic from the United States, from the North America region, will be going against JL Esports Club, a team from China, a team that we don't know too much about because they are behind that bamboo curtain. I look forward to what type of engagements JL Esports is going to bring on the maps themselves, and we're going to get started just after the map veto process. Let's break down Fnatic here first, gentlemen, and I'm going to head this up because this is one of my favorite teams, and I have commentated every single match, it seems, in North America. But first off, though, you look at the team lineups, you look at these names, Soviet is a name that is recognized not just in North America, but in pretty much the Russian EU clusters as well. This is a guy that communicates a lot with these different teams, and uh, <laughs> some of these jokes, hashtag sufficient, uh, sufficient, other things that we love to do with them. JL Esports, we got Edi uh, Kunta, Mantau, Bretain, QYB, Never Regret, and Black Crows. I can say I even met Fnatic in Minsk. They won some 15 years anniversary tournament. They're really quite a good bunch of guys, and Negatron even brought some shiny gloves, and he was amusing the native people there with that <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Negatron's a team leader, and him, Friction, Soviet, and Hugo Maximus have been the core of the team. And they've gone through some roster changes ever since season one had begun. Antonio Handsome actually lives out in Spain, but he is part of the team. Junior was a member of Simp a while ago. And Simp actually had three 
teams representing the Simp Clan overall in the first number of seasons for the WGLNA. Junior led the second string team that was Simple Tankers, and they almost brought Simp to the brink, Simp Main. Now, Simp Main was a team that we saw go against Lemming Train multiple times yesterday, but Junior has been added to the team. He's one of the T1s, and we also have Jackie Rudo, who is hailing from Canada. And he's been a member of the team ever since season two. So they have been making some adjustments and some changes. But I look forward to see Hugo Maximus performing very, very well in the IS3. But let's look at this team's overall stats right now and how they fare compared to some of the teams we've seen. Creativity, gentlemen, I agree with this assessment. Some of the most incredible plays, even on steps, I have seen from Fnatic. Accuracy, this is where they struggle. This is where they start to fall apart, is they have choked in some of these international events at WCG and other ones when they've been up against teams that have been daunting, kind of the, the Goliaths to their David, and they have missed shots, and they have hesitated. Is that a constant thing that we see with some of these teams? I can say I saw in their games, they have initial idea what to do. That means they follow the trends. They know what is the meta. They're aware of their surrounding. But they have a point, one point when they're really supposed to gather up and finish the game. They already won. And that's the moment when they can just disappear yeah. and fall down. And of course, it's a live event. Who's the current finals? If the pressure gets you, your hand might be get shaking and you miss some shots. Yeah, it I happens. I feel Fanatic's worst enemies themselves, especially under this type of pressure. Hey, Belisa. Soviet, however, let's take a look at his stats if we can. American fan favorite. Damage per game is spread out. He is such a great tactician with his performance and positioning the IS3. Kill death ratio 2.67. 11.8k battles on one of his personal accounts. Kirill Bondar is kind of one of the flagship personalities in America for Fnatic, and we look forward to seeing what his performance is going to be. But a lot of these guys have a lot of great personalities. Let's go ahead and check out what Fnatic had to say about themselves. Being a part of the Grand Finals is simultaneously uh, just a great achievement and an honor for us. We've been working towards it for over a year now, and uh, we just couldn't be happier that we actually made it and that we're here and we got first seed from our country. So uh, overall, just happy to be here. How do we feel coming into the tournament? We believe that the best way to feel is just confident in ourselves. We do not want to rank or measure ourselves ahead of, uh, we don't want to set any expectations into any of, in any of the matches. So uh, we feel confident in ourselves as a team and we're going to leave it all on the battlefield. I don't think there's anybody we're really scared of. I don't think anybody really wants to face Na'Vi to start out, but uh, we've got a pretty good seed. We're happy with how we are, and we're just interested in playing the best and seeing how we measure up and getting as far as we can. Three, two, one, back! We got to see a piece of what Fnatic is all about, gentlemen. But we're seeing the best of the best from China competing against Fnatic, and that is the JL Esports Club. Looking at the stats overall, accuracy, not too bad, but aggressiveness and creativity, a little bit lacking compared to some of the other teams. Decision-making, fight coordination, a little bit average here, but I feel since this is the biggest tournament in the history of World of Tanks, JL Esports Club has been practicing and honing their skills to play their game. Yeah, it ha it's really interesting to see. Like you said, these guys have been behind the bamboo curtain for so long. It will be really interesting to see what they can bring to the table. If they have done their homework uh, against Fnatic, what's their tactics, their gameplay, and found some patterns in there, they might do some magic against Fnatic. And patterns is such an important thing as well for each of these teams in each of these regions to pinpoint. We, we would discuss patterns we would see in the Russian and EU clusters over on the American side to try to emulate, okay, who is performing something we've never seen before? And are they doing it only on city maps? Are they doing, doing it only on open maps? Is it dependent upon the 
exact tank picks are trying to bring. And understanding those patterns is one of the best ways to understand a team's play style, and sometimes a region's play style as well. And some of the patterns we've seen from Southeast Asia and South Korea has been a little bit of non-aggression at the beginning. But seeing the Chinese team out here for today, I feel maybe a little bit different, especially up against America. Uh, let's take a look at one of the players, QYB. When I think it comes to top damage overall for his team, 2.54K on the average. Uh, kill death ratio, 3.26. Personal battles, I'm sure there's a lot, but they're under a different server. Uh, I have to say, if there's one of the players I'm going to look towards to kind of gauge how this team's going to perform, it's going to be QYB at the beginning of the first match. Yeah, he's in... Favorite tank has been T69. Now with the blind picks, it will be interesting to see. Is he playing that or MX5100 or something else? Well, we have another little video to show off who is the JL Esports Club. Let's take a look.我们非常有自信，非常的有信心，因为我们的队伍在国内大大小小比赛参加过很多。我觉得我们能代表中国参加这场比赛，非常感到非常荣幸。没有什么怕的对手吧，对每个对手，我们都有深刻的研究，我们
Nagatron giving his choice. Our admin relaying that choice. And it will be Cliff. All right, so here come the first three. Remember, the first to three will be the winner. But if we go into a draw system, we go to Sand River again, correct? Yeah, correct. Awesome. <laughs> Still waiting for that next pick. I think the third map is going to be one of the most crucial maps here between these two teams. And I want to divulge a little bit into the, what the third map pick is going to be. And now they're letting Fnatic choose the side. This might be a proc Mines. Mines, Mines. Oh, all right. So let's talk about Mines. You win the first two games. Mines, can you play defensive effectively? It's hard. It's it's hard. From the north, it's possible. From the south, it's it's really hard. You can do it with some T32s, maybe 5100 in your base, but it, it is hard to play defensive in Mines. So would you rather have the south side if you were playing defensive? Or would yeah. you rather the north side? I actually play defensive usually from the south. I would prefer the north, and I'm going to tell you why. You have that one rock face where the water side is. You do have a lot of open territory for any tanks coming across the middle section, but because of that, you can actually set a better crossfire compared to trying to push up to the center side. But that's where east play comes in. That's where you got to send one of your T1s to the east. Mr. Mojo, you may disagree with me. Oh, you'd rather have the south. South is really viable if you want to play defensive, but it has to be done really carefully in strict ways. Uh, and you definitely do not want to go with middle from there if you're playing slow tanks. And so will be the first map, Prohorovka the second, Mines the third, Cliff the fourth, Ruinberg the fifth. Now we've finalized sides. Teams will shake hands and they will get prepared in their boots and we'll wait for that game to start in just a little bit here. Big crowd, man. I was actually talking to a lot of the individuals that are there in the theater itself and people are sitting next to others they don't even know. It's, that's how crowded it is. Not a lot of open seats, which is fantastic. The Polish crowd has been phenomenal. And to hear them cheer for Lemming Train through those huge double doors away from our desk has been uh, one of my favorite memories so far of this weekend. All right, let's talk about Ensk, gentlemen. We've seen a split push from the north, two tanks down the east, two tanks down the rails. Very, very effective for that team, Red Rush Unity, I believe. How do you defend against that? What is a counter to a push from the north? Huh. You can uh, take the green side and the rails and greet them by spotting, <laughs> and uh, it's been done. Like We have a team like Lemming Train who tried to do it the same, only from the south. They played that game, uh, and they really, really lost it badly. Or you can play positional game in a city, but you must have a ready strike force to counterattack. You cannot just have dispersed tanks all over the map like some people played and wait for something to happen and react. Then it's too late because you already lost every kind of lead possible. On your screen, you can see the QR code. Make sure to scan the, that code to get your codes. To the left, you have Jackie Rudo. Next to him is Relics, one of the oldest members of the team, one of the core founders of the team. Junior is to his right. Him and Nagatron had a bit of a contest when Junior was on Simple Tankers that the loser would have to shave their face. Junior lost. And his goatee disappeared, and he actually looked like a 15-year-old kid after that. We were so used to seeing him with a goatee. Uh, Relics in the center, as you see, used to host a tank talk show, and him and Nagatron and Soviet have been the faces of uh, formerly Fulcrum, now Fnatic, for a long, long time. Now, to the, to the back, to the left, is Nagatron. He's going to be the shot caller now on the team. It used to be friction. Nagatron is a team leader, however, wanted to take more responsibility, especially for the loss that had happened in season three against Simp. And because of that mantle he took upon himself, he knew that he had to become the shot caller again to make sure that everything was, was streamlined. Nothing, nothing against Friction. Friction is doing a fantastic job. He's also a fancy scout, as far as I see from their games. Yeah. Very, very fast. That's, but That's not easy. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. But, you know, Friction would play the T1, which you see a lot of the commanders play. But Nagatron would play the 1390s and the T69s, and he would be the finisher. He would be that role to, to move to the flanks a lot of times. But I guess then they will split the jobs because they can feel each other out how to do it. It's really hard to play 1390. It's one of the hardest tanks to play and at the same time lead your team. 
because there was usually so much going on when you play the 1390. You, you might lose some concentration on your team. But you also have some perspective here one cannot see. Yeah, that's true. It, it's difficult to play any of these tanks in their roles, but especially to command and play at the same time. And that's why we brought up the Mac attack with Sim. When Mac died, his team had an over 60% chance of winning the match because Mac could focus commanding his team. Now yeah, the rest it would be uh, nice to have an overview of eight player and just to <laughs> tell he, he let him talk to other players. Yeah. yeah. All right, and there we see JL Esports Club ready to go. I believe both the teams have indicated they are ready, ladies and gentlemen. So it is my pleasure to kick it over to our commentators. Thank you, Clutch. We are here on day two for our very first match, and it is going to be Fnatic, the number one seed of North America versus the Chinese team, number one seed, the JL Esports Club. Now, these guys are a mystery. They said there they've researched all their opponents, but no one has researched them. That is a wild card and a half. Yeah, it's, it's a strange feeling to be able to sit down at the desk and not know anything about JL. They've, the interview hasn't even shed all that much light. They've been keeping everything a secret. Absolutely. So let's just uh, let's focus on the game and see how they perform. There's nothing we can discuss about it. So the first map is Insk. Now, what can we see on Insk? What do we expect from Fnatic? The Fnatic likes to play the middle. 5-6 line, it's a strong way to hold the map. You have that center flexibility. Now, Fnatic picked north this time. Okay. And generally north, I think. I, I like the defensive capabilities, but Fnatic I don't think will be very defensive in the northwest. They'll probably take the middle. And with that, there's some cool flexibility. I like the ability to defend your own cap from the north. Okay, but look at the lineups here as we go into Fnatic versus Esports Club JL. And we are going into game number one. These are on everything that's on the line here with these two teams are gonna have to prove they are worth it. Now, the Chinese team, they have a lot to prove. Their yeah. teammates, uh, their, sorry, their country mates who came in didn't get out of the group stage. So they are the last chance for China representing their country as they said in their video. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do. So let's look at their lineup, the Chinese lineup. Yeah, what I think this bringing? lineup actually has a lot to prove. 350-100s for... Uh, for Fnatic with two IS3s, very solid lineup, always tried and true. I'm less confident in 250-100s with three IS3s. I feel like it's not as effective as that one more 5100, that little bit extra burst. Well, this is actually an argument that's going along all the pro players and all these sort of city maps, where you go for three 5100s or three IS3s. That's kind of the decider. Now, obviously, the 110 can sometimes be picked up instead in a replacement, but that uh, is a bit of a risk. But here we go. Great shooting there. And the first death is uh, T1 from the Chinese EJL Esports Club. Was so he even spotted? He was spotted. I think Junior got the spot on him. Oh no, Junior was spotted and knew exactly where he was from uh, that. Blind fire right down the 5-6 uh, line. Great job. Yeah, Junior went forward in his T1, got spotted. There's only one place the uh, opponent's T1 could be. They took a blind shot to see, hey, is he there? Yes, he was. He's gone out of it. Well played. So, well, this is the best of five. This is the first time we're going to see the best of five. So uh, this actually gives the Fnatic a chance to adapt. If they do drop the first few games, which is a possibility, they have no idea what their opponents are going to bring out, then they have chance to recover. They have chance yeah. to get back. If this was best of three, GL Esports Club could do something crazy, take the two games, and there's nothing Fnatic they could do. Best of five, best situation probably. Yeah, and Fnatic is a team that I feel like once they get some momentum going, it doesn't matter if they lose the first one or the second one, but just give them a little time and they're incredibly difficult to stop. If they get momentum and Radix, it's... though, is under fire and he's gonna go. No, he's not gonna go down. Uh, he managed to return the fire. The Ice 3 saves his teammate. I think the T1 there would have died. Radix did somehow survive and he hit most of his shots. But um, <laughs> the giraffe for the uh, 5100 there. Um, oh, wait, we have some battle going on as Never Regret is in the open in a bit of a dangerous position. Hugo Maximus has got him pinned. He doesn't have any backup though, so Hugo Maximus is in a bit of trouble as well. Has to back off as the Chinese teams come at him. In the meantime, the 5100, Kute, might go down without doing too much damage there. He's at 73 HP. He needs to get out of there because Soviet and Friction are going for the cap pressure. He is covered though for a little while, and he may be able to stop the cap, especially if he goes to the south. Of his position. Now he could get some side shots in these eyes. Here he goes get the for that shot, reset. but he does get the reset. So there's 17 seconds of the clock, three in the cap zone. I'm not sure if this is a cap fast or if it is actually just a pressure of technique. But Soviet's down to one hit. Friction's getting in front of him to protect his teammate. Great share of HP here, but it might not be enough as Friction's also one shot now. Junior is in the cap zone. He's being protected by his teammate. Uh, Jackie is not able to help them. He's still fighting, never regret. And exactly, this could go wrong. But Nagatron is coming in for cleanup, and, and he is at full health. 
And there he goes. The reset has happened, and it's all down to Nagatron, who has to come back. But he is on reload, and think actually, no, we don't know what they're doing there. As Nagatron is playing the Circle of Death, and it is pretty close. But Fnatic still have those low HP tanks alive, and they are deadly once they've reloaded. Yeah, Black should be able to get a shot, maybe on. No, he goes he for Jackie. He misses, and Jackie there is coming in. Nagatron's at full HP, so he's just going to be a distraction. He doesn't have any shells remaining. Someone needs to go back to reset. 49 seconds is enough time, and it is friction going back for that. Here's Jackie doing the one more shot, so Black is um, two shots still. Nice but, shot wow, on the friction. Good shot to stop the cap reset. Nagatron's already on the way back, though. This is the last chance for JL Eastwards. Can they hold on for this cap zone? Oh, he decides to bolt. Um, He's going for the draw instead. But, well, there's six minutes left. Cap's already going. That's a great job. Uh, great first battle by Fnatic. Yeah, I, I don't understand why he left the cap zone, actually. He should have just gone for the cap. Um, Go for the cap win. He, I don't really know that why he would do that. It's it's, it's a lost game. He's just going to try and give his his team time to strategize for the next battle. Yes, Because they're going to exactly. go to Prohorovka. They, they have to think about, wow, what's the level of this opponent? Okay, we, so he's, he's buying may, that extra yeah. 20 seconds to be able for his captain to talk and yeah. disguise for the next thing. Very intelligent, very strategic. That was much closer than I thought it would be. They were in the cap zone defensive. They did a ton of damage. And then JL Esports Club almost brought it back. And that was really, really good from them. So, I don't know. I have confidence they might actually bring some of these games back against Fnatic here. Yeah, they fought pretty well. I felt like, though, we saw Fnatic playing fantastically in this first battle. Really solid. Everyone is coordinated and together. This is... Momentum's already getting going. Yep, definitely. That's what Fnatic need, though. They are a team that like getting momentum. They like getting the first few games. They say themselves that they normally drop or play badly in their first day. This is their first day. They didn't play yesterday, so they have to be careful because, well, they could actually completely fall from the competition if they have a bad first yeah, they day. They just gotta knock the, run, so the rust off. They've gotta... They've gotta hit the ground running. And this is not what they are strong at. They did say one of their biggest weaknesses, their first game. The first few games is always a bit rusty on their first event. They didn't have any chance to play yesterday. They didn't have really any practice time. So they are worried about that. At least they normally are worried about that. However, taking the first game, that's going to help them with their confidence. Yeah, uh, this is the one, th the one thing I want to note is that if... I see JL actually take a battle off Fnatic. I feel like that's going to kill the momentum from Fnatic. That's the place Definitely. where I feel like JL, the team we don't know anything about, could come out with a surprise of Prohorovka Mines and just come back for that. Well, 2,627 damage was done by Jackie. As we saw, he was the IS-3 in the end zone, cleaning things up for his teammates. They all were low HP, very low HP. And you saw Friction as he was running back, he did get taken out. So that could have been turned around there. So great damage from him. And yeah, he picks up the three kills, Nagatron with two. And uh, unfortunately, Hugo, who was one of the first tanks to actually start trading damage for his team. Well, the IS-3s from JL yeah. did really well as well. Never regret. And Black Crows did a ton of damage themselves and picked up three and one kills respectively. And that's something that you've got to pay attention to. They seem to be really strong with the IS-3s, hence why they went for a three IS-3 strategy. So maybe they are more practiced with the IS-3s. We're going to see a lot more heavier lineups from them. This is just speculation. We haven't seen them before. That was our first battle we've seen of them. So, But you did see how the momentum was shifted by having three 5100s as opposed to the IS-3s. IS-3s did great damage at the beginning of the fight, but the 5100s just rolled over that very easily. The, dam the early damage received by the 5100 driven by uh, Kunta, he received all that damage early on, although he managed to get the great reset, saving his team or buying them enough time to come and completely reset the cap, that he wasn't able to get his damage off. He only got a few shells into them. It, they were critical shells, but if he got the whole clip off, it could have changed. Uh, you yes. saw how low the HP of Fnatic was. It's a lot closer than you would think. And one more 5100 in that mix, I think, would have changed that a little bit because every tank on that cap was left so very low. Well, maybe it was less the lineup and more the position. He was caught out on his own and they gunned him down. Two 5100s gunned him down. Now, that was just two 5100s. It wasn't three. So maybe it was less the tank picks in that situation and more the strategic position. Maybe, but also 5100s a little bit more maneuverable. It doesn't have as much armor as an IS-3, not as much health, but the armor's there. True, but... Okay, well, we Sorry, will see armor. in the next I, game. I, I you said, said armor, but I think yeah, you meant speed, the firepower. Yeah, speed, fire rush. I didn't, I didn't want to just correct you. It's, you it, should it's okay. just, You can't let me get away with that stuff. <laughs> well, either way, they had the three IS-3s. They did use them well, but they were separated from the 5100s, and that was the critical mistake. What do you what do you think they were planning, leaving their 5100s behind their IS-3s, like really far behind, to the point they were caught out by Soviet? Yeah, I, I think they left them a little too far behind. You want to protect the 5100s with your IS-3s. They have more armor... 
and they're more effective like that way they should lead the charge and the 5100s come up they get on the flanks and then they start dealing the damage their job's the damage it's not to absorb it, uh, as nearly as much punishment as their ice threes Yes, that's yeah. exactly what the, the intention of this is, that you have your I-3s absorbing the damage and your 5100s are doing the damage, but if the enemy get round the back and they take out your 5100s, yeah. uh, before the I-3s even absorb any damage, that can really turn the tide of battle. Now, the 5100s' big weakness is once they've expelled all their shells and they're on reload, the tides can turn to the I-3s' point of view. And it almost happened with both the, or two of the three 5100s down at one shot. If they were just taken out before the reloads happened, that could have gone another way. And luckily for JL Esports, their 5100s didn't do the job and Jackie came in and cleaned up. <laughs> <It's just laughs> that's, that's the way it went. Yeah, but now we're looking forward to Prohorovka. Okay, what can we expect from Fnatic and Prohorovka? I do remember their final battle against Simp in the uh, Season 3 Finals, the North American Season Finals, where they actually lost on yeah, Prohorovka that was Simp. Yeah, they took a west side push right over towards the 1-2 line. They didn't even stop. Uh, it, was a, it was a weird place. Fnatic was already in a, a dark place as far as their team morale was going. And I don't see that today. I see them in a, in, with momentum already going. They looked uh, energetic this morning when I saw them at breakfast. They, they are completely different strategy probably on this. How are they feeling? They're relaxed or they're just... They're just focused, they're hyped. It was, is it for hyped or relaxed? This uh, is different Fnatic. We've seen yeah. casual playing, but we've seen almost suicidal aggression from them. Nagatron this morning stopped by the table I was at, and he looked intense. But Jackie and other members of Fnatic look much more relaxed. Well, let's get it on as Fnatic takes on JL Esports Club on their second game. It is 1-0 to Fnatic so far. JL Esports Club has a hill to climb, but it's only a small one. It's a best of five, so they still got a chance to come back. Let's see what happens on Prokhorovka. For the tanks, we've got two T69s and three 1390s for the side of JL Esports, a Pershing two T69s and two 1390s for the side of Fnatic. Well, that is a center play formation for sure for, well, really heavy for Fnatic, but a lighter center play there for JL Esports Club. Uh, I think they're going to take advantage of the hold down positions because they've got two T69s of Pershing. Take that center area. You've got a lot of flexibility. Ooh, look at this west. man. He's waiting for the initial scouts and he's going to go for the early damage. Unfortunately, he's missing two of the shots and wasn't able to connect with Nagatron. And we did see Elian yesterday from Lemming Train do some amazing dodging. I think it was on this map. Uh, yeah, it was on the back towards the, the K line south side of the map. Yeah, so it's all about the distance on this map. If you take these long range shots, there's a good chance that 1390s are just too agile and will dodge out the way. And Ely improved it, Nagatron just did it then. And uh, wow, that was a really good early aggression there from Esports Club, setting the trap, knowing that Fnatic would do the early scout. Yeah, uh, Nagatron is an old school scout player. Back when I was still playing in early, early game, when tournaments were not even in this uh, team battle format, he was a scout, T-52s, Ooh, all that stuff. He messed up his hill climb there, and Hell Nagatron was messed not able to get up. Messed up or didn't want to go over? Uh, definitely messed up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he was trying to go full speed and didn't quite make it. And that second delay prevented him from actually scouting the other guys. But the return fire didn't connect either, so still no damage received or dealt there. That's a few shots, though, wasted by members of JL Esports Club. And with that... Yeah, he there was definitely shots fired yeah. from both teams. With, so, Nagatron did fire yeah. as well, so a couple I, of shots have gone out. Yeah, I was thinking that with that, Fnatic might say, hey, some of these guys might reload early. This could be a nice time to push. Although, at looking at the formation of Fnatic, it might take a little too long for them to get from that west bowl side over to the east. Because as you can see on the minimap, this polarizing position uh, from both teams, you've got the west side and the east side. They have to cross through the tracks and the, these bottlenecks in order to approach their opponent. Well, Eddie, uh, the T1 there, um, Eddie, I'm going to call him, <laughs> and Relics have been spotting each other via proxying. Now, for the guys who aren't particularly familiar with the World of Tanks engine, anything within 50 meters get revealed, regardless if you're behind a hill or not. So these guys are trying to make sure no combat tanks are in the area, and they're keeping themselves lit up. But, oh, both the uh, Pershings are lit up there, or no, one T69 and a Pershing, therefore. Fnatic are spotted, but no damage is able to be dealt to them. There is no one in position here from JL Esports Club to be able to really get a good hit on them. It's almost any angle is impossible. You'd have to be in the southwest or the northwest in order to get decent shots into that bowl position. It's such a great hold down position for T69s and Pershings. 
So far, I'm really impressed with the initiative here from GL Esports Club. They are doing things that are very different to what we're used to seeing. And uh, Fnatic are actually on the back foot for a change. They're not entirely sure what to do. But as you can see, there is some initiative going on. Yeah, it, I wouldn't say back foot. It's just a difficult situation to aggress on. And they are looking for that position they can aggress on. This south side movement from the 1390s in Agatron Soviet, along with, uh, who's that T1 with them? Is that Junior? Junior and the T1 going to the south. They're going to try and uh, hide in the defilades for a bit, avoid getting spotted, or use, you could actually just use spotting to your advantage. Be out at a nice, uh, great distance, knowing that you're not going to get spotted until 300 some odd meters, and then say, well, there's probably a tank in this bush or that bush. We could blind fire. And we saw that battle number one on Ensk where we saw Blind Fire take out a T1 and give a little bit of room for Fnatic to work with. Yeah, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you know Fnatic really well. You've cast them for all three seasons. Now, I thought they were a very aggressive team. They take control of the map and then they work their opponent down. They try and find a weakness. Obviously, that's what they're trying to do now. But when I said back foot, this is where I'm saying, like, mm. Fnatic are being prevented from making any moves. Yeah, you see that they're trying their hardest here to find some sort of weakness. And they're going to run into the T1 here. They're going to find him. And he will go down, trying to do some damage to Nagatron, but meaning two shots wasted by the autoloaders here from Fnatic. I think it may have only been one from Nagatron and the Pershing. Uh, oh, Hugo Maximus shots. picked up the kill. Ah, well, there you go then. Yeah. Great shooting there from Hugo Maximus, but a, a silly a miscommunication there. Nagatron shouldn't have fired. Yeah, he should have held a shot or gone for the ram. He, he probably assumed because he was so close, like 50 meters, that he could make the shot. But, you know, you're going to miss a few. But now Black Crows is going to cross over in the north. And as Took Fnatic some damage takes... for it. And here's the blind fire from Fnatic as they are really good at that, predicting where the enemies will be, and their opponents will be, and just blind firing, and just constantly trying to get that little bit of damage. But Nagatron receives a ton of damage in response. Caught out a little bit there. I'm not entirely sure what happened. We, I think we missed it, but... Uh, never regret on the hill, I believe, in the 1390, which is a rare position, really. Not a lot of teams... Not many teams put their, uh, their 1390 up there because he's out of the fight in case a brawl happens down below. I've been caught out, my, my amateur team has been caught out doing that a lot. Uh, I think a lot of new teams, when they see this map, they think, hey, it's brilliant, let's go and take that hill. It's an obvious place, but if an engagement happens on the other side of the map, that's it. But some more damage is going out, as a lot of the JL Esports Club's uh, tanks have been damaged now, slightly. Hugo Maximus using that turret armor. Oh wait, some damage into the back of OYB, as he's getting massive damage against Soviet and Nagatron. They got four shots into his back, but that must be a low caliber gun. That wasn't doing much damage. There was a 1390 putting uh, shell in there. It doesn't, it's 240 average roll, so it's it's not weak, it's just not, you know, as hard as something like an IS-3. It or didn't look like the health bar was moving. <laughs> <laughs> he had so much, that proves the toughness of these tanks. They're just really, that's why you would take the bigger tanks. And the push the is toughness. beginning. We're going to see some slight aggression from these medium tanks in the middle, and I'm expecting to see the 1390s coming from the south in just a few seconds. And here we go, the big push, I think it's the counterattack here from JL Esports as they come straight in for this around on Fnatic. Will it pay off? But one of their combat tanks are already down. Both the T1s from Fnatic. Jackie is in a lot of trouble. One more shot for Never Regret, and he goes down. And Soviet Nagatron are out of this battle. If Never Regret gets back into the center before they reload, they will not be able to help. This but is I think beautiful he doesn't know where they are. counter aggression by JL Esports. They recognize the split from Fnatic and are now just tearing apart this middle group. And there's Friction going down, but he bought Never Regret did not get out of there, and he wasn't be able to be supported there by the rest. Nagatron and Soviet were able to take him down from afar. He needed to have got out of there. And that's JL Esports. The tides have turned again. Again, for them, their reloads on those Nagatron and Soviets 1390s were so critical for their defense here. JL Esports had it. If they just backed away from where they knew Soviets and uh, Nagatron were, they could have taken that. Beautiful play. And now only uh, Ieri is left in the T1 cunning, and he's up in the north, was not able to contribute to that fight at all, or even put cap pressure on. It, was a, uh, it would have been a smart move for JL Esports to start with some cap pressure. Well, there's oh, some cap the pressure devil. now. He yeah. ah. He's a little bit late to the party, but the shot goes through. I love the fact that destructible terrain now is penetrable and uh, <laughs> Fnatic won, not JL Esports, but there we go. Uh, Fnatic takes the second map. JL Esports though were very close to taking that win. Uh, they were doing really, really well and they, I think, forgot where Nagatron and Soviet were. They knew where they were. They had seen them earlier. They knew exactly where they were, but they forgot. I think and they could then have. They could have tried to tie him up. You send a third, one 1390 over there and you just try and waste as much time. So you've got a 2v1, but you make that overmatch uh, work in your favor by getting two tanks out of the fight. And then you have an overmatch elsewhere that's bigger and will have a larger effect on the battle. Well, it's just the, the feeling that JL Esports did the right thing 
up until the moment they didn't get out of there. Yeah. They they killed the tanks. They're like, yay, we won this battle, but we are going to sit in the open. And then the 1390 was like, come on, reload, 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 reload. Like five, four, three, two. And then Alpha Strike. And we saw them start to die. Bang, bang, bang. And 1390s reload. That's the end of that. But if they'd backed off, it would have been four versus two. Much, much harder job for Soviets and Agastrom to get it back for Fnatic. Yeah, and that's just the importance of good positional play in World of Tanks. You have to pay attention to exactly where you are. You can get some better shots when you're right in the air opponent's face. But if you position yourself in, behind the right rock, use some of those trains that were in the middle of Prohorovka's cover, you can avoid fire from other areas of the map. And that's something that JL Esports didn't do as well as Fnatic did this time. Yeah, that, that is it. Um, Fnatic seem to be... Well, JL Esports are doing the right decisions. They're making good plays. But Fnatic are just one step ahead. Those 1390s were in perfect place, obviously knowing that they could lure them in. Okay, we got two tanks down. You know where our big tanks are. They revealed themselves using their turret to protect themselves. And then in comes Joe Esports Club, a little bit earlier than Fnatic wanted, but not not early enough to actually destroy them. It was close, but not that close. It was it was within the range though that I think they could have. It was just the positioning, just the positioning that really hurt them in that one. I still think if never uh, was never forget never regret if he had come in and back into the city quicker instead of that long turning circle yeah. we did, he would have been out of the range of those two and able to well, reload and do the damage back. And that was the big mistake, saying in that sense it was a little bit too long. And it's down to the seconds. Uh, six seconds earlier, they were out of that battle, uh, out of the center, they would have won that battle. Four versus two at the end would have been very hard for Nagatron and Soviet. They had their T1s dead. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm actually thinking now more towards our next one, Mines. Okay, let's talk okay, about yeah, Mines. mines. So, what have we seen from Fnatic on Mines? Now, we did see them also lose on Mines against, simply took the early advantage, and then they didn't fully reload, went in in a bit of a mess. I think Clutch touched on this. Um, they, I think one of them clutched on this that, yeah, I think it was Clutch. He turned around and said that Fnatic, they take the early game, they look like they're gonna win, and then, they stop talking to each other and just go in one by one and die or yeah, something. They uh, become uncoordinated oh. when they get cocky. Uh, yeah, Fnatic has a habit of doing that sometimes. Uh, members, uh, I'll just say members that aren't Soviet, uh, Nagatron and Friction, who are kind of that, that core, core group. Three. Yeah, like they, they seem to always be on the same page, uh, but sometimes you'll see other members think that they should be doing something and not communicate it. They'll just go forward and think, I got this. And it's they miscalculate a few times. You, you know, everyone makes mistakes. Especially when you're up. When you're up in the battle, you're, you're one or two combat tanks ahead. It's very easy to be a bit relaxed and go, hey, let's just attack. And we've got this. We've got this. I've done it myself in command. It's like, guys, just, just, just go in and attack. And then they've got a perfect ambush and everything dies. You're like, oh, God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can recover. Sometimes not. And uh, with... Mm. Sorry. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was thinking about the strategies I was going to think on mines and who's on what side. Um, the sides seem to be that Fnatic are taking the south. It looks like, yeah, south yeah. is Fnatic, and I think they were south against Simp as well last time, but I have seen them do really well. One of the strategies I've seen Fnatic do, they charge up with 3090s with a smaller caliber gun. They ram the enemy center tank, take the track off, and then gun them down with the 69s that come up a little bit later and just destroy them. And I, that's the way they get the advantage. Yeah, I've, I've seen Fnatic do that a few times. I, I prefer to see when they do that with the WZ-132. I think it's more effective just the tank with that gun and bringing the 90s on the 1390s. Well, if they've done that, they might be in a little trouble as we go into the third map between Fnatic and JO Esports. Now, if you want to look at the tank lineups a little bit ahead of schedule here, because we see a bit of an opposite going on. Yeah, this is strange. I got a uh, 5100, two T69s, and two 1390s for the side of Fnatic. On right. the other side. So, Fnatic versus Esbo, uh, JL Esports Club, game number three. You say, what, they're going very defensive? I, I No, what's going to happen is center control. I think it's going to be hill control. There's a 90 mil probably on that 5100. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it when I get a chance. But on the other side, we've got a little bit slower lineup. That T32, never regret is, is going to have a harder time getting to the hill, but when he gets there, he's going to be hard to dig out. That's the advantage of the T-32s. You say no cons, but this slowness getting to this hill is what Soviets and Nagatron are going for as they come up, and they're going to go straight head-to-head -head against two of the JL Esports Storm. Oh, wow, Nagatron takes a hit early, and he goes for that round, but doesn't get the connection properly. Soviets and Nagatron in a little bit of trouble, actually, as they go to actually take down Kuntar. Kuntar versus Soviets and Nagatron. They're going to try and reload. Wait, they do not have the small gun. They have the high-caliber gun. Two shots against Kuntar. Three. They need two more to finish him off, though. Black Crow's come around the corner to try and save him. Nagatron bounces a shot, and then they take him down. 
down. Only aggression here from Nagtron the Soviet does take out two of the tanks. One more shot needed. Nagtron survives and he digs out two. Two for one exchange there on the hill with only one bit of damage to one more tank, the T69 there for Jackie and for Brit Britain, I'm going to call him. <laughs> I do, I've never been able to see these names before, so uh, unfortunately not so good at pronouncing. Well, it's an easy one. It's Britain. Britain, yeah. Just yeah, Britain. Easy for you. Well, now we're going to see a reload from Fnatic, the two 1390s. Uh, Nagatron's going to need to be careful. He is very he is very low, 99 hit points, but Soviet can waste as much hit points as really he, he wants on the top of that hill. It's but a very easy game, I think, for Fnatic. Never is coming up. He's going to be in a lot of trouble because Fnatic's Nagatron is on his side. And at the front, Hugo, Jackie, and Friction are powering him down. He goes down. Britain comes in behind. And OIB is not far behind, but it doesn't matter. The damage here from these guys is just oh, superb. The concentrated firepower, nothing stands in the way. That's another. That's all their tanks gone. That's all their combat tanks destroyed. Their T1s haven't even been able to advance in time. Yeah, uh, yeah, he took some damage earlier on, where is he actually? He's over in the east, and he was able to take down relics, but uh, it's unfortunately he's not going to have enough time to really capitalize on that. If they'd stalled for more time, they could have probably actually gotten some cap pressure. Back. That was a really, really good hair play by here, Fnatic. They just have to clean up this map, and this is over. Yeah. Uh, fantastic play. That was couldn't have gone better for them. I've, I've never seen them play this map so good. And there we go. Fnatic have taken out JL Esports Club. They progress to the next round to face the winner of the upper bracket, which would have been uh, the Unity versus uh, Virtus Pro. So Virtus Pro versus Synergy, will, whoever wins up that match will face Fnatic next, and JL Esports Club have a second chance. It is double elimination. They have a second Second chance soon, but what do you think of the Chinese team? First uh, time you've seen them. Next to Fnatic, they had some strong points. They made some good calls here and there. Especially, I liked what they did on Pearl Hirovka. Just little things. If they were, if they brought it together, and they just take a few minutes, say, "Wow, Fnatic had amazing strategy. What can we learn from this? Where can we go forward? We still have a chance to make it out of this losers bracket." I think they could bring a at least one or two maps to the edge against teams at the level of Fnatic. Yeah, I don't disagree. They're, they're yeah. not as weak as some people may have wanted you to believe. Like We were discussing it with many of the regions. They have no idea about the Chinese team, so they're like, well, I assume they're weak then. And instead of assuming they're strong because they don't know anything about them, they assume they're weak. We just saw that they brought it pretty close to Fnatic a few times. It was very, very strong play. But Fnatic on Mines, that was superb. That would have defeated any other team. Even Navi would have had trouble against such a play. It was fantastic. Everything was focused perfectly. Nagtog got in a little bit of trouble, but Soviet was there to back him up. Those two are nearly invincible together. And what a play. I've never seen such an awesome move on Mines. Yeah, we really need to watch out for those two 1390s together. I've actually uh, had the pleasure of sitting in on a few practices with those with that 1390 play on the hill where they were experimenting with WZ 132s with 1390s, and it was it was it was rewarding to see the way it works out because it's such an incredibly deep and complex fight on the top of the hill between two 1390s. The damage output, though, from this Fnatic team, the lineup they had was just superb. On the mines is the one I really want to focus on. The AMX uh, 1390s <clears throat> and that 5100 just focused down. That, that burst damage you were talking about was there. The TCC9s did their clip, but they're there just in case things go wrong. Yeah, I think they, uh, at the beginning, we, didn't, we weren't able to get that in the frame, but just to the southwest of the entrance to the hill. The T-69s barely got up there in time, and Nagatron actually delayed one of the 1390s just long enough to get a little bit of damage in there from the T-69s and set things back in the favor of Fnatic. Fantastic play. But let's hear it from the words of Fnatic's leader, Nagatron. Yes, you said it, Dorian. I'm here on stage with Nagatron from Fnatic. And a bit of a clean sweep for you guys there. Very, very strong showing over those three games. I want to talk about Prokhorovka there. Uh, an interesting, uh, I guess, development that we saw was that uh, your, your opponent's JL actually went aggressive. They pushed 13090 actually over the train line. And then everything just seemed to um, just coalesce into a bit, a bit of chaos. Can you tell us what sort of happened? Basically, our 69s, our medium column, was a little bit uh, staggered. So they just needed to focus fire a little bit stronger, but that just, it has to do with, they had more tanks in that spot than we did. They were able to focus fire tanks down quickly, but we knew overall that, that, would w that we would win that in the end. So it was a little bit messier than we wanted, but that's, that's Pororovka. It's just that map is always messy or it's a camp. So we decided just to take it to them. They picked up our T1, which is unfortunate. Uh, I had a little bit of a computer problem there, which is why they were able to get that 1390 over to even spot us there, but uh, it was close. It was, it was very close. That was definitely the closest match.
Now, tell me, obviously, you guys coming off the back of um, Season 3 Finals in NA, which I won't go into. What is the, what's the buzzword for you guys over this weekend? Well, are you, do you have a mantra? Is there you know, something that you guys are really sort of gathering around? What's the, you know, well, yeah, what's, your, what's your motto or mantra for this weekend? That's a good question. Uh, I think what we're focusing on the most is accuracy and aggression. As long as we keep the pace, then we don't get nervous. We don't really start second-guessing ourselves. And uh, we, we typically feel that we are our own worst enemy. However, here, maybe that's not the case because there's a lot of talent here. But uh, as long as we play our own game and we don't miss shots and we execute the way we need to, then everything will be fine. So I guess, I guess the best way to put it is execution. Well, thank you very much for that, Negatron. And ladies and gentlemen, the USA is here to stay. Fnatic with a strong showing in that first map. But let's pick that one apart a little bit more with our experts over at the analysis desk. Clutch, let's hear what you got to say about this one. Thank you, Uber. Team America continues to spread freedom in the world of Warsaw, Poland here for the World of Tanks Grand Finals. Congratulations to Fnatic. But gentlemen, you can perform better than that, and we're going to pick apart some of those things. And the boogeyman over here, Mr. Mojo, is not too happy. He feels that the Russians could completely decimate everything Fnatic brought to the table. But first off, gentlemen, let's talk about the first map, Ansk. The rails, okay, the rail system from Fnatic, it was I a good, really like their opening. It was a good opening, but yeah, what happened after that? They showed initiative. They controlled the map. Uh, JL didn't have appropriate uh, response. They were too spread. They were just rushing back to DCAP. But then Fnatic has tanks trying to shoot with their tanks instead of just to protect tier ones and lure them to damage. The guys on the rail are just shooting JL tanks coming back in the flank. They're not opening themselves for damage, so they will stop them. They're losing massive HP and from like completely one battle in advance, they're getting some ailment that had to be actually won by hard work. Blue Boys Captain, welcome you back uh, to the desk here from Simp. HP values seem to kind of go out the window for Fnatic. Why? What was happening there? The, the 5100s from JL Esports, they lived way too long. They, they should have died a lot sooner than they did. There were a couple times where they were just one shots poking out, take, taking a shot, then backing up, and they lived. That's not allowed. That, you can't do that and expect to win. I like the placement of the two heavy tanks down the rails that were able to get that crossfire from all the JL Esports Club tanks moving in in the, the city block, as we call it, North America. How would you counter that, Mr. Mojo, if you have a defensive play by those teams that's now putting pressure JL to the JL head tanks on the north part. And they use the square part to go back. But you don't do that. You send several tanks crossing the square immediately on the rails, engaging those tanks, denying them any opportunity to shoot other tanks that are going down for decap for any kind of damage. Then you start your fight, then you start your gameplay, because once you stop the cap, the capper is in worse position. And that was a good position offensively that Fnatic had. But you would rather send the tank straight across to the rails to engage rather than sending them to the north for counter cap or to get cross shots down the rail system. Because yeah. those tanks are trapped. There's only north or south they yeah, can they're go. they're trapped, but you are under cap pressure. Timing is of essence. Every second counts. If you go up, you can send some tanks down to try to rest it. But as gentlemen said, they will just die then. And what <laughs> will you do? You will shoot the other guys that are on the rail, but that's useless then. Let's talk about map two. Uh, the Prohorovka messiness, is that, do you agree with Nagatron's assessment, Wilkie? Is that a messy map or a camp map? Or just what happened was messy from these two teams? Uh, what happened was definitely a messy thing. Like we speculated here, if they play like that against Russian teams, they will get annihilated right there. Uh, JL had a really good idea, pushing to the middle against the uh, Fanatics medium tanks. The execution was just not there. They went way too far to the open because the just in 90s in the south were totally out from battle in short. But JL pushed their tanks to the open, so the just in 90s could just stay there in the south and shoot them to their side armor. That was a big mi misplay from JL. Well, I, I feel the uh, Fnatic was too complacent with, they, they felt like they could lose the hit points, so why protect the hit points if they can just win right there? They, they were too sold tier ones yeah. way too far. Yeah, and they lost the first T1 way too early, and they sent the other one 
to the flag cap. It was waiting there. It got shot from all the way to the north. And I'm thinking, if you have two 1390s to the south and it's got no shots, send them back. Have the pressure be even higher to the southern base capture. And if they're going to poke over the railroad tracks or if they're going to move further to the north, you have a tank that can absorb at least one or two shots to keep the T1 alive. Now, that may be not a play you guys agree with, but when you have that type of pressure, it forces your opponents to move out. And it also allows those two medium tanks to back up if they need to, if they do poke and get a couple of those upper shots. However, I just felt that they weren't using the T1s to the best of that ability, and they got killed way too fast. They've got to guard those a lot no, better. Neither of teams did. Uh, even the JL club, when they pushed, they should have immediately, while they were happening, sent their tier one to uh, cap and then just pressure them. And they didn't have to suicide tanks. They could just keep the pressure game up and then Fnatic would have to do something really, really fast. And that's usually desperation's choice. All right. well, I think the key to this battle was that JL Esports, they just needed to react faster and push the mid right at the start. Yeah, and they had they had those two tanks up to the north, but they didn't get to the north in time. And you brought that up right when we were watching it. The yeah. They were going for the village strategy up there and sending one of those tanks all the way to the hill on the east side, which we hardly ever see. But you've got to get, if you're going to split the map, east versus west, you've got to get to that northern side to see what the enemy is doing. Yeah, you, you must play the village really fast. Rely on six sense and then immediately head with 1390s to the north part, spot where they are, maybe t grab some shots and deny them opportunity to just go back and see what's going on. That's how you lock the battlefield out. Map 3, mines, brawl mode. That's all it was. And Soviet and Nagatron, the, the double team, the tag team, just moved up there and outperformed those JL tanks. But the positioning too, and you brought this up again, Mr. Mojo, because you're gonna, you're gonna get a critical these next two days, which I really like. You either have to choose to camp or to push the hill. You can't do both, and JL decided to do both. Yeah, JL was stretched. It's a small map and they were stretched. They sent some tanks up to fight on the hill. They had some tanks back, but how do you shoot with tanks back if you don't see anything there? So those guys there in the middle were completely long. Uh, Fnatic has two 1390s fighting them, two 69s coming to cover them, and what then? They're dead. He's gone. Well, even on the hill, the two 1390s of JL Esports, they split up. So it was just like, hey, Fnatic, focus this 90 and then fight that one yeah, over there. There was no cohesion. Well, if you try to split the fire, <laughs> it just allows them to focus fire a lot easier, as long as they can communicate and decide which tank to pick. I couldn't tell if they brought 75s, but it seemed that they were loaded faster than Nagatron and Soviet. I'm going to ask this question again because I asked it yesterday. And I think we pretty much have the answer, but some people still like to bring 75s to the firefight on mines. Wilkie, is it ever a good idea to have a 75 over a 90? Only in one 1390, when the enemy team plays three 1390s and you really want to get the hill control. So when both teams play light setup, you have one 1390 with a 75, it could work. But we really ra rarely see that happening. You know what I think performs better than AMX? 90, 1390 with a 75 gun is a WZ-132. I would rather have that tank over a 75. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, the, the WZ definitely is has a better gun than the 75 and the 90, and it gets up the fill, hill faster. It gets up there faster. It's not... It, it reloads faster, obviously. It's a consistent fire tank. It's traverse speed. It's better. It gets but more again, accurate on the move. Again, you cannot have tanks half map away. You yeah. need to have your guys <laughs> close to you to help you. You gotta go. You gotta go. All right, well, that's the first match of day number two. Fnatic is able to take it, and they move on in this series. We're going to find out what's happening between Virtus Pro and the Red Rush Unity in just a little bit. But before we do that, Melly, how are our fans doing over on Twitter and Facebook? Well, they're happy seeing Fnatic advance since, well... Fnatic has indeed a huge fan base standing right behind them and you see that in our uh, Twitter feed and they're all cheering for them and rooting for them and really happy to see them advance to the next stage of our tournament. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say a few words because challenges make people at home really happy, right? We do have a challenge for you guys and this is from our lovely partner Razer. Just head over to razorzone.com slash world of tanks and it's really easy. I prepared something somewhere down here. Let me just have a quick look and bring it up for you guys. And if we could look to my screen, I could show you easily. <laughs> Perfect. So it's really easy to get involved there. And you simply have to uh, insert your Razer ID email here and your password here and choose a winner. And by simply participating in this challenge, you get bonus codes. Boom. And if you're right, if you choose the right winner of the, this tournament, you have the chance 
to win awesome prizes like mouse pads. And well, it's a bundle. It's a World of Tank branded bundle of Razer. What wow. else do you need, right? Wow, that's huge. Well, all right, let's go down the line to help inspire some of the fans here. Melly, do you have a choice, even though it's day two, of who's going to make it? Oh, it's really hard to pick a winner, yeah, because this is offline World of Tanks and everything is possible. We experienced that in former tournaments, we, we uh, like the EU finals, but it was kind of predictable at the end, right? But we saw huge upsets already yesterday, and I think there, there's a lot more to come, so I can't, I can't, I can't choose. Of course, I do have some favorites lying around here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now here just, comes the bias. Look, look at this. Look at this. Oh, it damn. has my name. I saw Carmen bring that over to you. That is pretty special. And I was really happy. Thank you again, guys. And I wish you the best. Right. Blue Boys captain, you still rooting for Team America? I am rooting for Team America, but I have a secondary rooting for. I hope that the team that knocked us out goes far and makes us look better, because then we'd have lost to a team that went far. All right. Well, I appreciate your words, and also the best of luck to you guys as you prepare for the next season in North America. We're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, the next series of the day, stay tuned. You're watching the Wargaming.net League Global Grand Finals. <laughs>